Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for your coming. Um, my name is Xiao Guangrong. Today, uh, my colleague uh, Yulei and uh, myself will do the presentation to you. Uh, the topic is about uh, bring QEMI to microservice world. This is uh, what we have done at uh, Tencent Cloud to make QEMI uh, suitable to run the workload of uh, microservice. Uh, in this topic, we will uh, first uh, talk about the background. Uh, in this section, I will, uh, I will uh, explain what is, the what is the requirement of microservice and uh, why we need to do this work. Later, uh, we will introduce uh, QEMU adoption. Uh, this, is, this is exactly what we have done on QEMU to, uh, to make to, uh, to make QEMU suitable to run the workload. At the last, we will show the uh, future work. This is the uh, uh, to the list. By the way, I will introduce the background and the part of QEMU adoption, and uh, Yule will, will do the last. <coughs> so uh, Tencent Cloud has a uh, a huge number of resources. We have 25 regions. Also, we have a huge number of servers and a huge number of storages. Um, our business grows up very quickly. Uh, we have uh, lots of companies uh, came from uh, different areas. All of them has a, a different uh, requirement. <coughs> As we know, uh, more and more customers love uh, micro server, uh, microservice. Microservice uh, is massively uh, deployed. Also, it has a very uh, short of life cycle. Uh, so, so that uh, it requires a very uh, fast boot up and uh, less memory for the point. Also, uh, it requires a uh, very high level of security. <clears throat> Maybe uh, currently we have some solutions such as uh, Firecrack from AWS and uh, Cross VM from Google. Maybe Rust VMM is also a good choice. <clears throat> All of these solutions are, are very good, but we still prefer to QEMU. Why? Because uh, our uh, infrastructure is based on QEMU, and we are using QEMU for uh, so many years. QEMU is excellent and uh, stable, and uh, is uh, very stable on our, on our uh, production. If we switch to another project, that means we need to maintain two different projects. That is a huge burden for us. Uh, another reason is that our people have very strong background of uh, QEMU. They can detect and uh, fix any issues on QEMU very quickly. So based on that, uh, we prefer to adopt QEMU to meet our requirements. Of course, QEMU is not perfect. Uh, it, has, uh, it gets benefit, but also has some disadvantages. Uh, for, uh, for the benefits, QEMU has a very strong hardware isolation, and also it, uh, it uh, gets support of very interesting uh, features. But uh, lots of code in, uh, in QEMU, we didn't, use it, we didn't use it at all. And uh, uh, it, it will slow down uh, the VM put up. Also, it will use uh, more resource. So based on that, uh, our solution, we call it uh, QEMU Best Point. Um, by using our solution, we can, start, we can start up a VM just for uh, about uh, 35, um, 35 uh, milliseconds on default. And uh, it uses very little memory. Basically, uh, our solution uh, can bypass the guest kernel unit and also can bypass uh, QEMU unit. 
first, let's, uh, let's look into how does our solution bypass the guest unit. Uh, actually, the idea um, behind our solution is very simple. Uh, we leverage the current mechanism of uh, migration. Uh, we use migration to, uh, to do the snapshot of a, uh, of a running VM so that the, um, the new created VM can directly boot it on the snapshot. <clears throat> In order to sp uh, speed up the same, well, we use a shared memory. So the uh, shared memory can be backed on huge TPFS or even on TempFS, as uh, TempFS gets the support of uh, transparent uh, huge page. <clears throat> so uh, as a shared memory naturally persistent, so we, uh, so we don't need to uh, save and uh, restore the memory during uh, creating the uh, snapshot. Uh, we should thanks to cut the container because we get the idea from it. <clears throat> so uh, in order to uh, put a new VM, we just uh, directly put, uh, put it from the, uh, from the snapshot. But pay attention that uh, when, we, when we put a new VM, we should uh, turn the shared memory off so that later if we uh, if any changes made by the VM to the memory, it, uh, it will trigger copy and write. That means uh, a new memory will be allocated for the new VM. So later, let's look into how does our solution bypass Q, uh, QM unit, but I leave the rest to my uh, colleague Yule. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Yule. I will uh, finish the remaining introduction. Uh, as Guangrong has mentioned, after skip the guest kernel boot up period, uh, we will be able to shrink the guest boot up time quite a lot. Uh, but is there any further improvement or optimization we could make? After investigation, we find uh, cumulative initialization will introduce a project for uh, latency during the guest boot up. Uh, does it necessary for uh, each VM uh, boot up to use this uh, latency? Uh, we don't think so. So in this second stage, we are trying to eliminate, eliminate the uh, initialization cost to use fork to further speed up the uh, service instance startup. Uh, the implementation is quite uh, straightforward. As you can see in this picture, on the top left, you will see uh, the base VM. Uh, probably we can call it uh, uh, VM0. After boots up, it will reach uh, base point mode, which will finish most of the cumulative initialization, but not all the related works. Uh, still, some interactive <coughs> still some interactive with kernel KVM module need to be done after fork from it. So after finish all the initialization, the base point VM is ready for use. We will create the template from it, uh, which will be used for other VM to restore from. So as you can see, uh, the following VM 1, 2, 3 are forked from the VM 0 as well as the base point VM. Uh, then they will be able to restore from the base point uh, to skip the kernel uh, boot up time to get an extremely faster uh, uh, boot up. Uh, for the microservice usage. Oh, uh, this page will show the guest boot up time with uh, different configurations. So uh, originally QML with optimized uh, Linux kernel, uh, we can get about uh, 500 milliseconds boot up. And uh, after we apply the first optimization, bypass the kernel initialization, we will achieve about uh, 105 uh, 150 milliseconds. And uh, after we uh, apply the bypass uh, cumulative initialization, uh, we will achieve about uh, 35 milliseconds uh, for the VM to boot up, uh, which is a huge improvement. Uh, then let's talk about the security of uh, restored uh, 
VMs. Since they are created from the same base point template, uh, is it possible for the malicious uh, application to interpret uh, what is going on in the other uh, restored VMs and uh, intend to steal some information from them? Uh, that is what we may need to worry about. Uh, so in order to enhance the security mechanism, we will use the virtual ING as the uh, random number generator for the guest and uh, receiving the proper random numbers into the guest uh, entropy ports after restore the guest from the base point template uh, to make it a differentiation for each of them. Uh, but there are still some openings. Unfortunately, after, as we skip the kernel boot up, so we won't, won't be able to uh, u utilize the kernel randomness uh, to help protect the guest kernel. But alternatively, we could provide the dedicated template uh, for each tenant uh, to avoid this issue. Uh, then, uh, let's talk about some future works. So we will continue to optimize the current combo code to fine tune the guest boot time to achieve much more faster. And in the meanwhile, meantime, we want to introduce a QMU modularization which will be flexible for device model, hot plug, and upgrade. And of course, we will continue working on the guest kernel security enhancement as we just talked about. Oh, uh, that's quick. So this is the uh, last slide for this session. So we have proved that uh, QMU can be modified to achieve a requirement to faster deployment, uh, deploy intensive uh, microservices in an extremely short period. So meanwhile, uh, the same mechanism is also useful for our traditional VM-based uh, production environment to help our, our customer to deploy their legacy service as fast as possible. So uh, this work, we may call it uh, one stone for two birds. Uh, that's all for our introduction. Thanks. So any question? Uh, could you go back a few slides? I, I just wanted to understand, you, you do a fork to create a number of different uh, Cremus that are ready to run. You yeah, that so. one. And then, but then you restore from your template mm -hmm. after the fork. Mm -hmm. So um, does a fork only ever run one microservice and then it's done and get thrown away? Or does it get reused to run a, an additional microservice later? I, I, I was just confused as to... Okay, so yeah. you, you just saw the top line. So this is we, what we use to create a template. So we uh, boot up the base VM to, uh, to a base, uh, base, to base point uh, mode and then fork it uh, from the original process to get the base point of VM. And then we use the base point of VM to create a template. All right, so the, yeah, so the template isn't already there. It's the first thing created. Yeah, the, yeah so okay. we first create a template. Yeah, I understand now. Thanks. There are no other questions. Thank you. Oh, thank you.